It seems that these days it's impossible to go outside and not see the effects of pollution. But what if St. Petersburg, Florida could change these effects and become a city that is 100% eco-friendly with its energy source? And where will this ever-present free energy source come from? Perhaps the answer is just over our heads. Our mission is to design an applicable approach to achieve turning the St. Pete community into one that advocates and enacts the implementation of solar power to achieve 100% renewable energy throughout the city. Our vision is to protect St. Pete's environment and keep the city sustainable for generations to come. When looking at the demographics, the data shows us that St. Pete is a medium-sized city with a median income of approximately 46000 which is just below the national average, and has a solid tourism market, which brings in approximately 6 million tourists annually, which is obviously a huge benefit to the economy, its residents, and business owners. Furthermore, the Cost of Living Index, which measures key consumer costs, shows that St. Pete's average consumer cost is just below the national average. Even though consumer costs are below the national average, per our survey results, 73.8% feel they paid too much for electricity. Furthermore, 95.2% of residents who participated indicated they were concerned about pollutants from current energy sources. This data highlights the willingness of St. Pete to want to make a change to greener and more eco-sensitive energy sources. Becoming energy efficient these days is no longer a hard task. There are many ways to achieve this. The first is by harnessing the power of solar energy. The sun generates around 123,000 terawatts of energy per year, and humans only use about 8 terawatts of energy per year. The total St. Pete household electrical consumption is around 3.52 terawatts per month. This is the perfect opportunity to source energy from the sun. Another effective way is through household efficiency. Some things you can do include switching to energy efficient light bulbs such as LEDs, air sealing and insulating your household, unplugging your cell phone before sleeping, upgrading to more energy efficient appliances, and upgrading to a more energy efficient AC unit. Our driving forces are essential to the success of our organization. Without them we would cease to move forward. They consist of our volunteers whose altruism and belief in social responsibility keep us going even in the toughest times. The St. Pedians, whose artful community and millennial views help us see through the negativity, our complementers that choose climate change over the global war on terrorism, and our competition of clean nuclear and other green cities that keep us always motivated. Knowing our strengths and weaknesses will help us in all areas we face, both good and bad. Our strengths consist of low cost of energy in the long run, potential for unlimited energy, impedes global climate change, C3 and C4, and we're also volunteer-based. Our weaknesses consist of initial cost, non-renewable satisficing, lack of solar power education and exposure in the general populace, and high barrier entries. We have found opportunities in legacy planning, tourism growth, economic growth, job generation, healthier and cleaner environments, and also selling excess energy. We have also discovered threats that consist of bystander effect, message distortion, weather, and traditional energy providers like Duke Energy. The organizational model, similar to a business model, is our method of achieving our organization's mission in a sustainable manner. Our organizational model identifies the key partners and resources, how we will reach them, what the message will be, and how we will fund our activities to achieve the 100% St. Pete campaign's goals. For our marketing strategy, we have four different target audiences. They are low-income households, high-income households, small businesses, and large businesses. We have also developed four different types of marketing strategies. Our first one are community events. This is where people can attend our local events where we will have a tent to provide documentation, information, cool merchandise giveaways, games and crafts, and raffles, and other fantastic green-related items to get people interested and excited about solar panels and solar power. Next, we have the free lunch and learn, where this is where you get your education on solar energy, job opportunities, and ways to start your green journey. There'll be lots of solar fun for kids, marshmallow melting contests, building houses out of popsicle sticks, and so much more. For adults, you can also build an innovative solar cooker and get featured on our Facebook. 
For our marketing strategy number three, we have our mobile app. This is where we have developed a mobile app that contains documentation about our initiative, our marketing plans, upcoming community events, and published business recognitions, showcase winners of our raffles, and so on. And our last strategy are, is business recognition, where we publish names of our top supporters along with their contributions to the community and the 100% St. Pete initiative. Information will be published on the website, social media, mobile app, in anywhere else we have. Our total budget is $10,000. For thousand of that will be used towards community events and for thousand will be used for the lunch and learn activities. These amounts will cover the cost of venue, event supplies, merchandise, and food. The remainder of these amounts will be used for miscellaneous outreach needs. As for the other two strategies, the Sierra Club can develop its app for free and recognizing supporters on our websites costs nothing. This leaves an additional $2,000 buffer to use where we need in our activities. The persona I'm going to be talking about today is She Can't Afford It. This basically focuses on low-income residents in the St. Pete area. Our persona is 30 years old, she's a telemarketer, and makes about 30000 a year. She just recently moved to St. Pete and is having a hard time struggling with balancing work and also providing for her kids. She recently learned about going green at her telemarketing job, and she's on a journey to see how she can go ahead and achieve that. Moving on to the journey map for She Can't Afford It. This focuses on cost and education and how our low-income persona finally reached her goal of becoming green. This happens in eight events. Events one, two, and three is about awareness. This takes place while she's at work and talks to a customer who is very educated and knowledgeable about green energy. He talks to her that if she actually replaces some of her heat pump and goes energy efficient, she can get a huge rebate back. Events four and five is actually taking that first step and getting involved in the community to see how she can go green and getting more education. Events six and seven is actually taking that first step, contacting the energy carriers, seeing if she can get her rebates and how she can finance. And she actually changed her LED lighting and also some of her HVAC system. Event eight is how she actually completed her journey and she is now going green. Hiona Biz is a 35-year-old St. Pete native who attended USF where he obtained his MBA and is now the owner of Rent and Save, which is a local storage business. Although his business is doing okay, he is constantly looking to become more innovative to remain competitive with rivals. Being a native to St. Pete, Hiona is looking to be more active in the community and create awareness around actions that may impact the community. Over the last few years, he has been consistently losing customers and is left wondering what else he can do to improve his business. Over the last couple of years, Hionabiz noticed a decline in market share, so he started actively surveying customers. After three months of surveying, he found that customers felt his prices were not competitive with rivals. He tried to lower his prices, but simply cannot match competitors unless he finds a way to lower cost. In an effort to reach the community, he scheduled time to participate in a local community event. At the event, he noticed the Sierra Club's 100% St. Pete booth, so he walked over to see what it was about. While there, he learned about innovative and eco-sensitive ways to reduce his energy footprint and lower cost. After carefully considering all the options, he decided to purchase solar panels and get his insulation checked. After the insulation checkup, he found his insulation was barely meeting the minimum R rating for Florida, so he decided to upgrade the insulation as well. Six months later, he sees reductions in energy costs, which has allowed him to be more competitive with rivals and has also resulted in month-over-month -month increases in customers. We have Plethora of Wealth representing our high-income household. She is a senior partner at a public accounting firm, making an annual salary of $250,000. She could afford to put solar panels on her house, but she's always looking for a good deal. She hears so many differing views on global warming and renewable energy that she's not convinced it's a worthwhile investment. One of our marketing strat strategies is hosting a tent at the Saturday morning market, where we hope to catch plethora and those like her. She'll hear just enough information at the Saturday morning market about the benefits of solar energy and how it will positively impact the whole city, that she will go home and do more in-depth research on her own to help formulate her opinion. Through her research and from testimonials from any coworkers and friends who have switched or are switching to solar energy, 
she'll discover how solar energy can benefit her community environmentally and financially. She'll be convinced that she needs to move to solar energy and the city needs to go 100% solar energy as well. Lopez Ventura is a man in his early 30s who is all about big business. He currently works in middle management and makes around $55,000 a year. He's a hardworking professional recently drawn to St. Petersburg because of economic opportunities. Right now, he helps organize office parties, retirement ceremonies, and company sporting leagues. First, Ventura sees a Ready for 100 campaign tent. Second, he and his employees participate in the initiative. Third, his company becomes involved by sponsoring the Sierra Club events. Four, the Ready for 100 initiative becomes ingrained in company culture. Five, initiative is undertaken to make the corporate buildings more energy efficient. And finally, Ventura is voted into the executive board and given more money to help with the initiative. The road to 100% solar energy in St. Petersburg, Florida will be a challenging and yet highly rewarding one. By becoming a pioneer of city solar usage in Florida, St. Pete can be a beacon of hope to a country plagued by pollution. With careful and extensive planning based on our project findings and developments, there is a strong chance of success in turning St. Pete into not only the sunniest city in the world, but also the most solar-friendly city in the world.